Father, we want to thank you for tonight. We want to thank you for our ability and to come together and have the class. Lord, we just want to thank you for all that has been gone forth in order for us to be able to meet. And Lord, continue to be with us so all that's being that's in the class will be able to understand and apply everything that's going forth. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're tonight going to be um, having our third module, which is membership expectation. And the major expectation is that we will not just be members, but we will grow in being disciples for the Lord. Tonight, we're going to be covering, um, as I said, the expectations, and we'll be covering the supporting the pastor and supporting the church through tithes and offering and being an active uh, person in ministry. We're going to now turn it over to Missionary Gwen as she teaches, and then we'll come back. And if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, and we'll recognize you as we go. I'm going to turn it over now to Missionary Gwen. You're on mute. Okay, the new Main Street Church of God in Christ, new members class, module three, membership expectations, pastors, Elder Brandon Clay, committee chairperson, Dr. Robin Steps, and I am your teacher, Catherine Gwynn. Most people call me Rose. It says supporting the pastor's vision. B, financially supporting the church through tithes and offering. C, understand the importance of being active in ministry. Membership expectations. When a congregation has found a shared vision through the leadership of the pastor, leader whom they trust, they will make tremendously personal sacrifices to support him in making the vision a reality. Vision requires visionaries, people who have allowed their minds and hearts to wander outside the artificial boundaries imposed by the world as it is. A vision requires an individual who has the courage to act on an idea. Pastor's vision. Who is responsible for hearing God's vision for the church? Of course, every believer is responsible for hearing God's purpose in his or her life. But the church is not an individual. The church is to function as a body of believers. So it is by nature an organization of believers and organization requires leaders supporting our pastor's vision. The future of the church fulfilling its purpose is dependent upon our visionary leader who is calling us to rise to a new level together. Are there any questions? Okay. One, encourage consistently. Our pastor needs to know you believe in him. Every lead pastor needs to know the people closest to them believe in them as leaders. A simple email, a handwritten note, or a simple thank you in the hall can communicate that you are with them. Two, pray. Your senior pastor needs you to pray for them every day. Your relationship with your leadership will change when you start supporting them with prayer. Nothing of eternal importance happens without prayer going on before it. Our membership expectation, times they are changing. Whereas before you could simply share information via word of mouth, now having a strong social media presence is quite important for a church to grow. When our church shares announcement or special events, or even our pastor sermons online, share those things to ex expose more people to our church community. It only requires a click from you and reaps massive dividends for our pastor and church. And we know that by just being on social media. So please like and share when our pastor comes on for Wednesday night, Sunday night, and all other events of the church. Seven. Financial support in the I want to ask a question. Okay. I want to ask a question before you go any further. Uh, all of the new members, do you receive all of the announcements that are sent to us by Missionary Connie? Everyone is receiving when we have different announcements and different uh, 
activities? Is there anyone that's not receiving? Um, Dr. Steps, I also want to add that um, we are in the process of going to a new medium of sending out information, calling posts. Many of you have opted in, but over the next couple of days, I will be contacting those who have not. So when I contact you, I give you a number and the only thing you have to do is call that number and it will automatically opt you in. So please, please, please do that because it's vitally important that you get all of the information that's um, being sent out because a lot of the directives come from pastor and I just send it out. So you're actually hearing the voice of the leader when he tells me to send out certain information. So we wanna make sure that it's getting into your hands. So thank you, Dr. Steps for mentioning that. Right, and we just wanna make sure is if there's anyone that's having uh, any type of difficulty getting on uh, either your Facebook or YouTube or anything uh, uh, that's our technical, if you would just call Missionary Connie, then she'll do individual uh, connecting and training with you. So on Sundays or Wednesday night or any other time we have announcements, then you'll be able to get on, but she'll be happy to do that. She's been helping some others as well. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the uh, vision, to pastor's vision, and how vitally important it is to catch on to that vision. Um, we can see what he's doing in the church. Um, to we can see what what he's doing in the church, and it's important. To, to follow the vision of the leader. We, we shouldn't have our own, you know, we may have things that we do in ministry, but everything should point back to his vision for the church because God gives him that vision. And we want one of the best ways to honor his vision is to be obedient to our leader and obedient to God, if that makes sense. I just wanted to add that. Yes. and. And um, he created, or uh, he's in the process of creating uh, inbox where you have ideas that we he might not have done or the church is not doing that he's creating for you to post to him your ideas that you might have. And he al always recognized others' ideas as well. Okay, missionary. Okay, financially supporting the church through tithes and offering. Our church ministry is solely supported by the faithful tithes and offering of our church members. Giving faithfully is an act of worship and indicating you love your love for God. Your tithe is the first tenth percent of your income that God's called you to give to your local church each month. And offering is any money you choose to give above and beyond the tithe. Let's look at supporting scriptures on tithes. And I want to mention, this is so true. For example, if you only make $900 a month, you still pay $90, $90 you give $90 to the church. Anything over 90 is your offering and you give whatever you desire. Hold on one minute, I got somebody at the door. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. while she's coming, uh, she's going to be covering the, uh, the two scriptures. And supporting okay. the church through tithes and offering. Okay, She's Malachi 10, bring the tithe into the storehouse so there may be room in, the, in my house. And test me now in this. Um, says the Lord of hosts, if I, if I will not open up a window for your, uh, of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Leviticus 27 and 30, thus all the tithes of the land, of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And if you would go to Matthew 28, 16 through 20, this is the New International Version. It says the Great Commission. And I'm going to get to that. And I, before I forget, I just want to say that before I forget. 10, please. The Bible says that we are not to worry about finances. He is in charge of every penny that we ever see. We shouldn't avoid tithing because we are fearful about our money. 
giving our tithes to the Lord is an act of faith as well as an act of obedience. When we support our church, we're supporting all the ways that we reach into the community. It isn't easy to physically minister the soul's needs of a three-year-old, a homeless vet or a recovering alcoholic. But through our financial support, our church is doing all of those things on our behalf and more. We become part of a larger community of the family of God. Okay, understand the importance of being active in ministry. A church is a main venue for using your spiritual gift. First Corinthians 12 and one, God has given you abilities and talents and intended to help other Christians. If you're not involved in a ministry, others are being deprived of what you have to offer. Use your voice for kindness, your ears for compassion, your hands for charity, your mind for truth and your heart for love. There's so many needs in the church that you could be a part of it and use your spiritual gift. 12. Understand the importance of being active in ministry. Being active in ministry helps you to be faithful to your call to ministry. Ministry is a vocation in which it is very easy to get caught up with activities that are nece not necessary or part of the church program on earth. We need to keep on course in our own ministry doing what God has called us and mandated us to do. It is the will of God for people to participate in ministry activities and serve others, Matthew 23 and 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Ministry environment enhances biblical understanding. And we are servants. We are supposed to be a servant to others, not serve ourselves, but to others. 13. Before Whenever you go to the, before you go to the next one, okay. I'd like to make a comment uh, on, uh, as far as being involved in ministry, uh, and if you will go back to, is it, can you go back to that one? It's 12, I think. 12. Is that it? I just want to uh, bring out a personal note. I uh, When I, actually, when I was, I started at Main Street when I was like 19. And of course, when you first start uh, being involved in ministries, it's important because your life has changed. So therefore, some of the things you used to do, you eliminate those things. But when you eliminate the things that you were previously involved in, it's important to, to substitute, bring in something in the place of that. And so that's why it's so uh, important to be active in the ministry that you feel that you have gifted in because if you just take away things and take away things and never add in something positive, then you'll feel left out. And it was it was it was it was better for me when I started being more active and being involved with other people because the company I used to keep a lot of it I didn't have it anymore. So it's good when you you, you instead of someone telling where well, that's not a good thing to be involved in. You want to add something good in its place, especially when you're very young. And one of the areas that we talked about last week, um, and most of you will probably fit in that area if you're a young lady in YWCC, Young, young Women Christian Council. And that's from ages 19 to 40. And that is something that we get ready to be more active in and doing some different activities. We won't be able to do as much as we're gonna do after this pandemic comes down. We know we can't do this. We have to do a lot of social distancing, but we're gonna do some activities that we can actually do online. And we're gonna be uh, getting information from the younger women, how you can, um, some ideas what you would like to do. So keep that in mind as you go forward about being active is very important. Okay, missionary Gwen. Oh, I'm waiting on you, I'm fine. It says- I'm finished. Okay, understand the importance of being active in ministry. What, whenever God calls us to a task, he will equip us. That is so true because 
I'm not the one to get up in front of Zoom. And no, I don't like doing it, but God has equipped me to learn how to do it and adjust it. A popular business principle is one they call the 80-20 principle. Basically, it goes like this. Typically, 20% of the member of the people do 80% of the work. Many are the application to this in the local church. 20 do 80% of the giving. 20 of the people do 80% of the outreach. You get the idea. Also, ministry partners are the best lifetime friends and great sources of encouragement. I would not still be in church if I had not had people in the church to, to encourage me. And you need to always remember there's somebody that's always rooting for you, wanting you to make it. 15, uh, it says involvement in ministry is a lifetime of service for Jesus, like Jesus and with Jesus. In fact, it's all about Jesus. It says <laughs> disciples of Jesus Christ build on the word, empowered by the spirit, going with the gospel. Amen. Okay, the Great Commission, if you would look in Matthew 28, I talk, start talking about it, I had to re make myself remember it. It's eight, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. It, it says, the Great Commission, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that is the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 16 through 20, 20th verse. Are there any questions? I just want to uh, comment that we all need to keep in mind, based on the Great Commission, there is a great difference between being a member and being a disciple. We got to keep that in mind. The best way that I've been able to uh, explain this to uh, a lot of individuals we have a covenant. We have a contract. Like at, if you teach or you have any job that has a contract, you have a, a section on your contract that says duties, uh, expected duties, what they're paying you to do. And then you have a list at the bottom that says extra duties. Other assignments. So, yes, you have other assignments. So when we do things like clean up the church, work in the uh, kitchen and you do some different things in the kitchen or you do different things to uh, work in the yard. Of the, that we're, That is very good because you have to take, we all have to take care of the property and the church. But the Great Commission is what you're hired to do when you become a child of God. That means you have some things that he requires us to do. Learn how to become a disciple yourself so you can teach others to become disciples. So we don't want to just feel like just doing church work is the only thing that you require to do. When it comes to your contract with Christ, you have a commission. And that is to make disciples and in many places as you possibly can. So we all have a work to do, but we don't want to feel like just doing work, uh, physical work is going to be all that he requires of us. He wants us to make disciples. So that means we need to do ministry work, do things that's going to draw others to him. Amen. 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 I have a, a comment on the tithing. I just want to share um, my brief testimony of how God taught me how to tithe. And I was probably in some of the space where some of you were. I was saved in 2004. And shortly after that, the Lord started dealing with me on tithing. And I was I think I was working at the prosecutor's office at the time. And I had gotten a check for $250. 
It was on a Friday night. We were at church. And the Lord said, give your tithe. And this is my first experience, you all now. <laughs> give your tithe. And I'm like, what, God? You, all I got is $250. And you want me to give 10% of that, <laughs> which was $25. And now remember, this is my first experience. So I said, OK, I went ahead and did. I gave the, the, my tithe. And then um, then he took me to the scripture, which uh, missionary uh, Gwen read in Malachi 3 and 10, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, imagine the windows of heaven being opened and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So there's there's a promise that God's make when we are faithful and we we tithe, we do as his word say. So on Sunday, that was on a Friday night, right? On Sunday, I get to church and somebody walks up to me and gives me a check for $200. And God says, just, just watch me, watch me. And this, this has sold me ever since. And I did that. And then somebody else walked up on the same Sunday, God is so awesome, and gave me a suit that still had the tag on it that said $150. You cannot beat God given. And I'm telling you, ever since then, I have been faithful with my tithe. And now it's just a part of, it's a part of me. Now I don't look, every time I go and give a tithe, I'm looking for something in return, no. But through the years, God has been faithful to me. He's taking care of me. A lot of people say, well, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And you're not married. God is a keeper. And this, the Amen. word works. The word works. So when you get a chance to read that, Malachi 3, actually it's 8 through 11, when you get a chance to read that. But I'm a witness that um, God is faithful. He I have a comment. I have a comment. Um, on the tiding, that's just like uh, when you know, this is like uh, the obligation we have. Uh, well, the contract we have was getting the ten percent, but offering. I understand that offering is when you give what you can, and the more you offer. That, that 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 gives uh, it, you get more. Uh, well, I don't know if you get more, but I was get to understand that when you t when you give offering, the better you can give offering, the more he will pour out a blessing out <laughs> open up windows for you. Is that true? How do that go? Well, when you you have your your tithes, your obligation. And I've always been say, told, you pay tithes, you give offering. So the more you give, the more you receive. So therefore, when you're giving offering, you might not get it in dollars, but you get blessings otherwise. There could be times when you might have had to buy something instead of you having to buy it, somebody brought it to you. Or you get... Uh, different breaks and you just different different bills or not having to pay that you normally would it just comes in all kind of ways you just blessed in all type of ways not always monetary but it's just believing and having faith that it's better to give than to receive because he's going to give more than what you give that's right and it's not always monetary right. yeah. and like you said dr steps a lot of things that god has blessed me with money couldn't mm -hmm. buy that's true. That's also, uh, I pay my tithes and offering, but also the house that I'm living in, when I got ready to get it, I had zero dollars. The man told me, said the house is going to be over $200,000. So I had that kind of money to be paying down on the house. But I'm here to tell you, I'm living in a house that I pay nothing down on. Nothing. And I've been here for the last 10 years. I had no intention of even trying to get this house. I didn't even want the house. But right. God gave it to me. Yeah. That's the way it works. That's, that's, that's just some of the examples of how he blesses. 
The more you and that's why faith comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go on. You had something to say? I, I Does someone have you. a comment? No. no. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, we'll Dr. have our last Dr. Step. module. Yes. As you were talking and I was just listening, I thought about the song that we used to sing uh, way back when I was a little girl. You can't be God giving. There you go. No matter how you, no matter try. How you try. The more you <laughs> right, the more he gives to you. So yes, just right. keep on giving. Yeah. Just keep on giving. And mm -hmm. that part that's about it. the offering, that's mm -hmm. it's it's like you ask he asked the told us what the tithes is, 10%. Right. Right. But the offering, like the sister Miss, missionary Gwen said, it's it's what you feel you led to give or right. you're able to give or want to give and when mm -hmm. you have that desire to give he right. blesses you for that desire and that willingness <clears throat> to give right. and i you know i didn't say anything but if we all started giving testimonies we'd be here a long time tonight <laughs> i know yeah. the lord has blessed, blessed yeah. me down through the years and yeah. I've tried to be a faithful tither for many years, many years. Yeah. And okay. sometimes, you you know, the enemy would make you think you can't afford to give your tithes. Mm -hmm. But you have yeah. to totally be, uh, ignore that and know that you cannot afford to not give your tithes. Right. Amen. Amen.